Right then, we are now on step 11, um, which is asking us to put the engine pods in. So we're ready to install those, and at the same time, we're going to put some more zinc anodes on this um, area of the stern here, using exactly the same process that we did before. Uh, we'll use some matte varnish um, to dab them on, and, and then uh, we've got another coat of matte varnish to do anyway, so that should all uh, work nicely. Um, and then the only thing remaining to do on the lower hull is just pick out the sea chests um, with a, a dark wash, a black wash. So let's have a look at that. So when it comes to the engine pods, we've got four pods to put on. The two that go at the front are fixed, facing forwards, and the two at the, at the rear are the ones that are um, able to rotate. And so I'd like to show a little bit of animation. Um, so at this point, I'm picking which side of the model I'm going to display because I want to be able to see um, the propellers um, a little bit more head on. So I'm going to put my rear engine pods in at a little bit of an angle to show um, that they move. Um, so not everyone that looks at the model will be aware, so that'll give them a good understanding. So Revel have made this task easy because they have made the engine pods different shapes so that you can't put the wrong one in. So that looks eyeballing it that looks about right so well, it's quite a tight fit in fact that's not quite going in so we're just going to it's probably the paint that's built up in there so I'm just going to open that up a little bit okay so that's that angle done let's just test the fit of these we can now put the zinc strips on it's been really difficult actually to find enough reference pictures to be able to do this accurately so I'm gonna do what I know um, and we'll work it out as best we can so on this um, back edge there is three that descend but not quite in a straight row down they sort of edge their way in as they go and there's one just on this edge here and then there's one in the middle so I'll get on and place the rest and then I'll come back to you and show you what that looks like. I'm going to glue the engine pods in from the inside. Now um, these are supposed to be movable but I'm not really sure how, how that works so I'm going to glue them into place unlikely to want to move them once they're glued in or once it's on display I should say uh, these little caps go over the top of these back ones I think that's because they're supposed to be movable but I can't quite see how it's going to work really because there's not there's nothing retaining it in um, so they constantly drop out if you move them a lot I think okay that's the bow thrusters on and our zinc anodes, anodes along the back. So our next task is to put the propellers on. Now I have found that the peg for mounting the propeller on is just a tad too long and the propeller doesn't sit right to the back 
as it should. So we do need to shorten that um, ever so slightly. So I'm just nipping the end off. About a millimetre, one and a half millimetre, something like that. As long as you've got enough to locate your propeller, that's all that really matters. Right, I'll get these, uh, this side done and then we're ready to flip her and show you what that looks like. Um, I can now start getting to grips with all these rooms that we need to put um, the flooring down in. So as you can see, um, I've taken strips of 5mm wide uh, masking tape, laid them out on this old cutting mat, um, and then I have painted them in with the uh, Humbrol 225 colour. Um, I've had a couple of coats. Um, and before I did that, I actually cut the masking tape into little strips, which are four millimeter wide, which should be about right for sticking into these rooms. So what we're going to do is start putting these in one at a time, and hopefully, um, because we've done it on sticky tape, masking tape, we should be able to do it a little bit more quickly than if we were painting them individually. There we go, one, little hair there, get rid of that, two, yeah this is definitely a nice quick way of dealing with putting this composite floor in. should be able to get through these many hundreds of rooms um, in fairly short order hopefully and then once we've got them all in we'll give the whole thing a cut of varnish which will secure it all in place I will crack on with this and show you what it looks like when it's done. Queen Mary 2 has a number of different balcony type cabins. There are sheltered balconies inside the hull with a solid steel bulwark or wall at their, their end face. And then up in the superstructure there are similar balconies but with a glass balustrade or bulwark. And then there are larger cabins such as the Princess Grill, Queen's Grill, penthouses and the like. But the balcony cabins within the hull were an important consideration. And it was certainly impressed upon me from Carnival's management that the ship should have the maximum number of balconies in order to secure the highest revenue potential to offset the premium that we were paying in making Queen Mary to an ocean liner rather than a cruise ship, something the order of 40% extra would be the material cost of the ship and operating cost of the ship. And so I certainly had to do everything I could to maximise the number of balcony cabins. And I achieved this by reversing the arrangement of the Queen Elizabeth II that basically had her public rooms at the top of the ship, just below the boat deck. And I brought these down low in the ship and made them quite high. So instead of the, the normal three and a half metres height of a public room deck, I made them four and a half metres so that we could have some really dramatic high public rooms. 
But by bringing those public rooms down and then starting the cabin decks on top, three, three cabin decks within the hull, I was able to lift those cabins sufficiently high from the waterline to immediately start having balcony cabins. Albeit, for prudence, I decided that we should have the, the solid bulwark to give them some protection from the large waves that uh, you occasionally encounter on the Atlantic. So that's the reason why there's different grades of balcony cabins on Queen Mary 2 and why we have the, the solid bulwark um, balcony cabins inside the, the hull of the ship. They're there to obviously increase revenue and to provide passengers with a balcony experience. But um, most importantly, they're, they're protected from having those public rooms below. Right then, all of our rooms have now got um, a floor in them. And what we now need to do is put some glazing in the back so that as you look through them, you get uh, an appropriate sort of reflection. Um, I'm using some acetate and what we're going to do is place it against um, the top edge. It's really important that it's straight at the top because we don't want it fouling on the deck um, underneath. We'll do the little ends separately. So place this on top of the acetate and what I'm going to do because my edge isn't straight is we're going to put the kit part against the grid okay, so we now have acetate strip and what we need to do is make four of those in total and then we can uh, make some small ones for the ends and then we'll be ready to glue them back on. So we've cut our acetate out and we're now ready to install the um, uh, inside the hull. The, the, we're now ready to install the rooms inside the hull. Um, the length the location strips are running the, the length of the inside of the hull have little notches cut out and what you can see from this side is um, they actually hold the part in really well there's no glue on that um, it's just clipped into place um, there's a little there are some areas where we need to just pinch it together as we glue um, but yeah it's gone into place really well so what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, Revell contactor on the location points um, and then we'll run some thin glue um, underneath once we've got it um, all tacked into place. So that's the plan. So that's our first set of internal rooms 
in place. To attach my acetate, I'm simply going to use um, unthinned PVA, uh, just cheap stuff from the hobby shop. Um, and it's really a simple process of dabbing some on, pressing it against. This isn't going to be very visible, it's just to get a reflective um, surface really behind this um, before we blacken it out. So I'm just going to start adding some of the glue and then we can fix this in place. And I'm going to do every sort of three rooms, I think. Um, I think doing every join would be a little bit of overkill. We're only really tacking it in place. Yeah, I think that will be right. And the important thing is that it doesn't... Um, stick up above the height of the uh, of the part because that's the bit that's critical because that's where the depth's going okay, so that's the first one on I can now glue one of these small squares on for this area here So my next piece should be slightly too long, so we'll get a pair of scissors and just snip it to length. And just then. Trim that off. And then we can glue that into place as well. Okay, so that's the glazing done. Now what I want to do next is blacken that. Um, and we're going to do that using some cartridge paper. So I have some uh, A4 black pad. Um, you can see that it's, uh, it's not too thick, so it's easy to work with. Um, and because it's just um, paper, it'll be light enough to again glue in. And what we're going to do is just put some sheets of this in um, to blacken everything out inside and try and reduce any um, light gaps that we might have coming in ahead of putting the deck in. So we will start, um, I think, at the bow. Get the height right and then I can just mark by cutting a snip in with the scissors. And what we'll do is we'll just cut a little section out so that we go beyond this um, hull support. I'm just bearing in mind we don't really want to put too much glue over where we might have. Uh, a window it shouldn't be seen but just to be sure and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom edge where it's just touching the hole there just to help fix it in place really That should blacken out my rooms. Yeah, 
Right, so uh, now you know a process, I'm going to carry on and finish this off. Um, and we can show you what the finished look is like when that is done. So with our scratch built deck now completed, we can now uh, fix that into place. Um, so it sits on a little rim that goes around the um, whole stern of the ship so we're gonna put some glue on that and that should be all we need to do to fix this into place So there we go. Now there is a slight gap going around the edge, but when you look through the openings, that is um, not at all visible. I have checked. Okay, that's our first deck in place, which is quite a pleasing feeling that we're moving forward. Um, and you can see that grey painted deck comes out really nicely when you look through these openings. So our next job is to put the exhaust system in. So we can now add our exhaust which is really going to bring this area to life and add some detail. So we're going to pass it through the opening and the hole that we'd um, drilled, so if you remember the hole that we put in was one millimetre uh, and this is 0.9 millimetre aluminium tube that we're using. So all I've got to do is find the hole. There we go. So we're going to glue that into place. So I'm just going to mark off the length. So this actually protrudes slightly out of the um, opening. Um, so we're going to cut couple of bits to this length and then we can adjust it um, inside the bulkhead to get the length that we want on the on the outside. So if you've not cut um, tube before the way to do it is to do it with a knife and just roll your knife backwards and forwards while you apply some pressure and eventually you'll work your way through that tube when you can feel that you've grabbed through you can just trim through okay so let's get these fitted now they're cut to length so I'm going to start by just feeding it through put the other one in as well for good measure okay so these um, poke through the opening and then protrude by a small amount. So they're visible but not dead visible until you're sort of close up really. Um, so we're going to start by wanting to glue into this top bit of the um, opening which will hold that into place and then we can glue behind the bulkhead. So I'm using some medium CA to do that. And by simply holding on the back end, which raises it up slightly, we can hold it steady. Okay, now when you look at some of the pictures of these, you'll notice there's like um, a yellow and black striped jacket on. Now, my understanding is that um, as launched, the ship had these um, in their bare metal um, uh, natural sort of metal 
tube was left um, uncovered. And then it's an uh, an additional afterthought um, to put like a, um, a hazard covering on them. I guess so you don't bang your head or something like that or because they're hot or whatever. And if you wanted to emulate that, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave mine in, in the bare metal. Um, but if you wanted to emulate that, all you need to do is um, get some yellow um, masking tape like this and um, wrap it around, cut it off um, so that you've got a cover and then you can, with a paint pen or a, um, an ink pen, put your black stripe on. Um, but you'd need to do it after you've installed it, um, otherwise it's going to possibly foul what you're doing. Now that looks suitably good. In real life this is um, suspended from the um, ceiling, but we can't do that because of the way we're constructing the model. So I'll get the other one fixed into place and then we'll get back to you. So that's our two exhausts in place. These are the exhausts for the emergency generators. Let's have a look at what that looks like. End on. Yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Happy with that. Now, there is other stuff that hangs out of the, the back of the ship here. Um, mainly... Um, some uh, lights used to illuminate the um, ship's name on the on the stern here so um, that is something we will do but we will do towards the end of the build because what will happen is I will constantly knock them off if we put them on now so right now we'll leave them off but we'll we'll be having to feed a little bit of wire in uh, with some um, lights on the end towards the end of the build Queen Mary II regularly carries families with children, both on her transatlantic crossings and on her cruises. So it's important that we provided facilities to keep the young ones amused during the long voyages, especially on the transatlantic run. So at the aft end of Deck 6, we have a suite of children's playrooms, there's a nursery with um, a baby listening service as well and the aft end of the deck is arranged with a, a children's pool, a splash pool and various games area. Now on the Revel 1 to 400 kit this area of deck is J33 and it's actually depicted in the kit as having a wood sheathed deck and this is incorrect because the deck is actually covered with a springy type of composition decking which is um, a poured synthetic material that is poured into place and then it sets or semi sets into this springy deck surface which we felt would be better for children playing about if they were to fall over they wouldn't suffer um, such severe impacts so if you're going to depict the aft end of Queen Mary 2 correctly you have to remove the engraved wooden deck lines and sand it smooth and paint it in the middle stone colour to depict the, the children's area correctly. So we have three alterations that we need to look at um, on um, this part, which is um, J33. Um, one is around the staircase, want to replace the staircase. Um, the second is um, the doors. So we have little pointy doors which don't look uh, correct, so they want replacing uh, with wooden doors, um, and then we have the fact that we have a raised deck detail. Um, so Ravel have got this wrong. Um, Art Walks, when they've done their wood deck, they have um, done a wood deck for this, so they've got it wrong. And Pontos, which have done the upgrade stuff for 
um, the, the uh, Platinum Edition have also done a wood deck for this area, which is also wrong. So all three of them have, have got it wrong. So we need to get this deck completely, totally smooth. I'm gonna show you my process for that. So I'm using a chisel. Um, you can use as wide a chisel as you like, really, um, in most of the areas. Uh, and I'm just taking the majority of that raised detail off then I'm getting into the smaller areas with um, smaller chisels but we don't want to be damaging the deck so be really really careful so where I can't get in with a bigger chisel like in these areas here we're going in and taking off one uh, raised strip at a time and then we're simply going to go in with a small piece of wet and dry and sand that down. Using a very fine bit of wet and dry, I'm just going in and making sure that we're totally smooth. So it's a little bit of a time consuming process, but it needs to be done. At the same time, we're removing the raised lip either side of the stairwell. There'll be some railing going in there ultimately. Um, but there's also a staircase that needs to drop down um, above that. Uh, and we're getting rid of the raised lip here, um, which is the area where um, railing will go in um, on the stern of the ship um, looking out to sea. Um, so that all needs to come off as well. So there's a little bit of work to do with that. And then with the staircase, we're going to replace that with some photo etched stairs. Um, so it's a solid piece of plastic and what we need to do is remove um, most of it but not all of it. So as you can see here I've kept in place um, the, the side wall here which will be, um, firstly it'll help me put the um, etched stairs down which we will have to feed in from the top once this is glued into place. It'll make sure that I keep them straight. Um, but also there is um, uh, there is a, a side piece there um, when you go down, but it's open on the other side. So we've done that correctly, um, but it does need a little bit of work to, to get it right. So we're simply going in with uh, a razor saw. Cutting down the edge, it doesn't need to be neat, we'll tidy it up with a, a, um, a file afterwards and then cutting off um, again with the razor saw at deck level. Now there are some little um, lumps, look, um, these are to stop the um, stand lamps from dropping through um, but we also need to remove those and the reason being is we're going to do some scratch building work on the ceiling here um, so Just take that off So we've opened that up and then we can go in with uh, a flat file the way. And Tidy up the surface make it nice and flat Also, while we're underneath, there is a little location point that's used to centre the deck. Um, it's visible when it's put in and it's not on the real ship. So we want to remove that. Like so. Um, and again, get in with a file and smooth that down. Um, so it looks like it was never there. Um, with these, I've just taken those off with a chisel. There are some ejector pin marks. Now many of them won't be seen, but these four will be, so we need to treat those four. 
Um, so I'm going to get on with cleaning up these parts and um, when we've got the part cleaned up and we're ready for um, the next steps I will come back to you. Okay so part J33 we have now removed all the raised um, corking lines on the deck and we have removed the staircases leaving just that one bulkhead. Um, so we still have a little bit more that we have to do before we can get to grips with painting this ready for fitting. Uh, so we have a part to add um, which is uh, part L50 um, and the way this goes together is it sits in front of this um, raised lip here and then you've got two tabs one on each side that stop it pushing forward of the bulkhead only uh, they don't uh, and actually if you pull it back you and line it up those tabs don't come into contact with that bulkhead at all um, I would say by about a millimeter maybe so what we're going to do is we're going to glue that into place um, and then we're going to have to fill it because as you can see we're getting some uh, gaps there so if we have it slightly proud we can then sand it smooth with the with this corner bit of the bulkhead uh, and get any uh, filler out at the same time. So we've got that to do. The other thing we've got to do is correct this rear pool. So this is all kids pool area and uh, this is um, this pool should be on a on a an angle with a deep end and a shallow end. I'm going to leave that because when we've painted it and put um, some water in there, it's really not going to be noticeable. Uh, this one, however, is um, way too deep. Um, and uh, Stephen and I have talked about it, and we estimate that it needs to be raised up um, to the bottom of the staircase. Now, if you can see that, that's quite a bit. It's a good two millimetres, maybe a fraction more. Now, one solution would be to pour something in there that will level it off. The problem with pouring a liquid in is the tendency is the, the uh, tension will mean it will rise at the, at the edges and it won't be totally flat. And I don't want to do that because um, it just won't quite look right under paint. And even though we're going to be putting a little bit of water in here, um, it still won't look right. So I think what we're going to do is actually cut this out, use it as a template um, to put either this back in um, higher up or cut out a fresh piece of plastic card that's a bit th thicker uh, and that we can level up into this area. Um, so we're going to have a go at doing that, which means we need to cut that out. Now I want to cut it out um, keeping its shape so the best way to do that is to just scribe the edges and keep scribing until we've cut through so it's a bit time consuming um, but it is doable. Um, the fact that this plastic is quite hard um, doesn't help but what we'll do is we'll do a few cuts to get us going And then when we've done a few cuts on that side, we'll do the same on this edge here. Once we've done about three or four cuts, we can start putting a bit of pressure on so that we can cut through. This rounded corner is a little bit more challenging. But we're just cutting in small sections at a time, one edge at a time. Right. I will cut this out and get back to you when it's done. So what we've done is we've drawn around the inside of the pool area on a bit of plastic card that we're going to use to put into the pool area. Um, so we're just going to cut that out. And then we'll start uh, 
trimming it to size slowly. But what I ideally want to do is get it to fit nice and tight without any gaps. So we know that's not going to fit initially. I'm just going to trim it down. Um, now bearing in mind that the pencil line is on the inside, I'm just getting it close to the pencil line right now, and then we'll do a test fit. So I think that's enough cutting. We will. Uh, one. We'll now start gently sanding it to shape and keep test fitting until we can pop it in and adjust it up and down. Then we can get it to the right height. I'm going to carry on doing this and I'll get back to you on it. Okay, so we've now got this into place. You can see how it is now higher than it was before. And when you look at photographs of the actual ship, then you've got three steps um, and then you're on the surface. So that is what we've emulated. And when we put a little bit of water on this, it will be just a thin coating which will go up um, to about the one step up. Now there is a small gap in here, I think, I think it slightly gets wider as we go up, um, so I was fitting from the bottom, and maybe should have been fitting from the top, but I'm happy that we've got sufficient contact to um, glue this in place, and then what we'll do is gently fill it, but that is the pool uh, now corrected. So whilst we've got it in the right place, we will get that glued in. And then we're just gonna run a bit of reinforcement on the back. So we're going to use a bit of the kit part that we removed. And cut that into a brace. Okay, so we've created a little brace at the back there just to stiffen it up. We'll let all this um, dry and then we'll go around with a little bit of filler and uh, that'll be job done. So before we glue this part into place, which we want to do so that we can fill the gap at the same time as we fill the gap of the pool, um, is we just want to tidy up the windows a little bit. So what we've got is windows that front face are fairly narrow, but the, the frames are actually triangular, which is common. It's how they get the part out of the tool. Um, so they get thicker at the, the the windows get narrower at the back because the framing is thicker. 
Um, so what we want to do is just straighten that up so that the windows, um, actually the impression of the windows is better um, and it, it takes away the thickness of the plastic uh, and it just looks in scale a little bit better. So you can see um, I've done this side, I'm about to do this side and you can tell the difference, it's marginal but um, it's there. So you can see as you look into this that these these um, are getting narrower whereas these almost, nearly finished, are not. So I'm just using a scraping tool to get in there and scrape the back flat. Now if you've not got a scraping tool or you've got a scraping tool that doesn't fit in there then a knife blade, point of a knife blade will do exactly the same job for this. Um, and we just want to get it nice and flat make sure we keep the corners sharp and we don't create a, a like a bow in it um, and then that should look quite good and ready for glazing once we've painted them so that is it for episode 9 unfortunately um, in episode 10 we will be progressing this deck a little bit more um, and we'll be doing some scratch building at the bow and preparing um, the foc'sle um, and also we'll be doing some work on the main promenade deck uh, ready for fitting it. So Stephen and I hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Until then, enjoy your modelling, look after yourself and we will see you very soon. <laughs>